What's up? Meditate here. Let's talk about the anatomy of the respiratory system. In this segment, we will be talking about the anatomy of the trachea and the bronchi. Alright, so the respiratory system consists of all the organs involved in breathing. These are the nasal cavity, the pharynx, the larynx, trachea, bronchi, and the lungs. In our last two videos, we covered the anatomy of the nasal cavity and the larynx. Now, let's do the anatomy of the trachea and the bronchi. So in this video, we're going to cover the anatomy of the trachea, which includes the parts that make up the trachea and the layers of the tracheal wall. After that, we're going to cover the bronchial tree and the alveolar tree, and then we're going to compare the layers of the tracheal, bronchial, and bronchiolar wall to really understand the anatomical differences of structures as you get closer to the lungs. So here we see an anterior view of the chest. The larynx is up here, and inferior to it, you will see the trachea. So let's go ahead and remove the bones to see them better. As the trachea descends, it divides into two mini tracheas that enter each lung. If we now remove the lungs, you will be able to see those mini tracheas. We call them bronchi. So now, let's remove the bronchi to focus on the anatomy of the trachea. Now another name for the trachea is a windpipe, as it's a tube responsible for directing the air into and from the lungs. And the trachea can be between 9 to 15 centimeters long and roughly about 2 to 2.5 centimeters in diameter. And the trachea goes from the 6th, 7th cervical vertebrae down to the 4th, 5th thoracic vertebrae. Let's now focus on the specific parts that make up the trachea. The first thing you notice are those horseshoe shaped cartilages shown here in green. And they're horseshoe shaped because they don't really cover the backside as you see here. And you have many of those horseshoe shaped cartilages stacked up on top of each other for a smooth airflow. These cartilages are called tracheal cartilages and they very much resemble a horseshoe as you see here. And between each of these tracheal cartilages you're gonna have ligaments connecting them as you see here in green. And those ligaments are called the annular ligaments containing strong fibers that connect each adjacent cartilage together. And then on the back side, as you see here in green, you're going to have a fibromuscular membrane connecting the tracheal cartilage together at their dorsal edges. We call it the membranous part of the trachea. So again, it consists of tracheal muscles and connective tissue. So that's basically the structures of the trachea. Now let's look at the layers of the tracheal wall by making a transverse cut. Remember, we're still going to have the membranous part back here and the tracheal cartilages. Now I want to focus a little bit on the tracheal walls with the inner walls here highlighted in blue. So the innermost structure we will find is this one, the tunica mucosa. And the tunica mucosa contains tracheal lymphoid nodules which help fight against microorganisms in the air. And it also contains tracheal glands that lubricate the surface of the respiratory tract that make it more adhesive to any irritants or organisms in the air. And once these irritants are caught, you would usually start coughing to aid in removing these. So that's the tunica mucosa. The next layer we have is a tela submucosa, which contains loose connective tissue and blood vessels. Then, you know we have the cartilages and the membranous part of the trachea, but externally to that, we have the outermost layer called the tunica adventitia, consisting of dense connective tissue for protection. Now the trachea starts off at the larynx and then goes all the way down until it splits. And the area where it splits is called the tracheal bifurcation, as you see here. And at this region where they split, you will find a small elevation on the inside. So if we make a transverse cut and look at it from this perspective, you will see this, right? There's an elevation here at the bifurcation we call carina of trachea which is essentially just a ridge of the last cartilage protruding into the lumen of the trachea, right before it becomes the bronchi. And just don't forget that the esophagus is still located behind the trachea here. Now, let's do the anatomy of the bronchi. So, as the trachea splits into two bronchi, we get the right primary bronchus, or the right main bronchus, and the left primary bronchus. And they split at the region of the 4th, 5th thoracic vertebrae, as you see here, where the trachea ends. Alright, the right primary bronchus and the left primary bronchus differ in that the right one is about 2.5 centimeters long before it enters the lungs, and it's shorter 
and wider and more vertical than the left one. The left one is about 5 cm long before it enters the lungs. So it's longer and more narrow. And this is before they both enter the lungs. Really important you get that principle. And here is something I need you to never forget. Is that the left main bronchus curves more than the right main bronchus as you see here. And why is this important? Well, in clinical perspective, there's a condition called foreign body aspiration, where a person inhales a foreign object into their airways. This uh, mostly happens in children. But imagine, when a person inhales any type of object, small enough to enter their respiratory tract, if it gets far enough, which side do you think the object will fall into? Most commonly into the right one, since the right bronchus doesn't deviate much from the tracheal axis, as you see here. And if the object haven't gone far down the respiratory tract, you could try the Heimlich's maneuver. If it is far down the respiratory tract, you gotta get in there with a bronchoscopy to either suck or pluck it out. Now, I reckon you will never forget this. So, the right and the left primary bronchi will enter the lungs through the helium of the lung, which is the entrance into the lungs. And from here, it's going to divide into smaller bronchi according to the lobes of each lung. There are three lobes on the right lung, so the right one will divide into three lobar bronchi, or bronchi lobaris texted. The left lung has only two lobes, and this gives us two left lobar bronchi. So after that, after they've divided into each lobe, they will further divide into segmental bronchi. The right one will divide into ten segments, and the left one into eight segments, according to how the lungs are built. Alright, so again, the primary bronchus becomes a lobar bronchi, which then becomes a segmental bronchi. Let's now do that one more time, but this time a little more detailed, because it's important to know this. Primary bronchus goes through the helium of the lungs. As you see, the right lung has three lobes, and the left one has two lobes. So the right one will branch off as a superior lobar bronchus, middle lobar bronchus, and the inferior lobar bronchus. The left one will branch off as a superior and inferior lobar bronchus. Now, let's do the full bronchial tree on the right side. Here is the right lung. It has a superior lobe, middle lobe, and inferior lobe. And if you look at it from this direction, you'll be able to see the helium of the lung, which is the place where the bronchi enters the lung and branch off to each of these lobes, as the superior, middle, and inferior lobar bronchi. Each of the lobes are anatomically divided into segments. The right lobe is divided into 10 segments, and the left is divided into 8 segments in total. And this is where the lobar bronchi will divide into segmental bronchi according to the segments of the lobes. And this is also surgically important because if there are any tumors or any other indications to surgically resect a part of the lung, we can do that according to the segments. In this way, we won't damage other parts of the lungs by damaging these bronchi. So I made a quick scheme that summarizes this. The bronchial tree consists of the right and the left main bronchi, which divides into two or three lower bronchi, three on the right lung and two on the left lung. They will divide into segmental bronchi, 10 for the right lung and 8 for the left lung. And they will keep splitting 6 to 12 times until they become really small, approximately a half to one millimeter in diameter, now called bronchioles or terminal bronchioles, which will be the end of the bronchial tree. Now what is specific with the bronchial tree? The inner lining of the bronchial tree consists of respiratory epithelium, which are specialized epithelium with cilia. Those hair-like structures on the surface are cilia. The only function the bronchial tree has is air conduction and protection by catching whatever irritants may be in the airway and pull them upwards so that you can cough them out. But as you get deeper into the lungs, these lining epithelia starts flattening out. So at the end of the bronchial tree, approximately at the terminal bronchioles, these respiratory epithelium will change into cuboidal-like epithelium. And this is where we say that the bronchial tree continue as the alveolar tree. So again, we have the terminal bronchioles, which will continue as the primary bronchioles. And already here, you can see these bumps on the surface of the alveolar tree called alveoli. The alveoli are our primary area for gas exchange so that we can receive oxygen. And you will notice that the deeper into the lungs we get, 
the more alveoli we're going to have. So secondary bronchioles are going to have even more alveoli and tertiary bronchioles are going to have even more alveoli. These names really depend on which source you're studying from. They're also called respiratory bronchioles in some sources. After the tertiary bronchiole, we're going to have the alveolar ducts, which is going to lead into the alveolar sacs, which are sacs with a lot of alveoli for gas exchange. They are highly vascularized, as you see here. Now again, the bronchial tree will have respiratory epithelium. The deeper into the lungs you get, the flatter the epithelium will become. And in the alveolar tree, we're mostly going to have these simple squamous epithelium, which are thin epithelium that help with gas exchange. Now lastly, let's go ahead and compare the layers of the tracheal, bronchial, and the bronchiolar wall. And we will start by going through the trachea again. So the inner layer is the tunica mucosa, remember lined by respiratory epithelium. And then you're going to have the tela submucosa with a lot of loose connective tissue. Then there's a horseshoe shaped tracheal cartilage with the smooth muscles on the backside called the membranous part of the trachea. And then they're all protected by a layer of tunica adventitia. So as we look at the bronchus, we also have the tunica mucosa on the inside lined by respiratory epithelium, since it's a part of the conductive airways. Underneath, we have the loose connective tissue called tela submucosa. Then externally to that, the muscle layer, the cartilage and the fibrous layer are going to blend into each other into a layer called the fibromusculocartilaginous layer. Simply add fibers, muscles and cartilage together. Notice here that the horseshoe shaped cartilage is gradually starting to disappear as it becomes fibers. So externally to that again is the tunica adventitia, which is a dense connective tissue for protection. And as we look at the bronchiole, the inner layer is still going to be tunica mucosa, but this time lined by either cuboidal or simple squamous epithelium. And then there's a tela submucosa, and then the cartilage and the fibers are completely replaced by smooth muscles called the tunica muscularis. And then you're going to have a layer of tunica adventitia on the outside. So that was all I had for the anatomy of the trachea and the bronchi of the respiratory system. Our next video is going to be about the lungs.